John chapter 17. I pray for them. This is Jesus speaking. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen. That was verse 13. Now verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Amen. Let's clap our hands before you're seated. Praise God, you may be seated. I want to preach on the subject, not of this world. Not of this world. Amen. You know, when we read about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was taken captive and tried and found, you know, actually not guilty by Pilate, but guilty by the crowd, and he gave in to them, and he, was, he suffered and was crucified, Amen. He prayed a prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Praise God. And normally, we, when we hear about the, the Garden of Gethsemane, we know that he went and he, he prayed and he woke the apostles up and he told, can't you watch with me? And he, he was in very, very much sorrow. And, you know, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And, and one place in Luke, it said he prayed so hard that his sweat became like great drops of blood. Amen. But John 17 is actually the whole prayer amen, or at least a bigger portion of the prayer than what we read about in the other three Gospels, amen. And he was praying for us. He was praying for his, his apostles at the time because the church hadn't started, but he was praying for his people, amen, because he knew, he goes, I'm going to be out of this world pretty soon, and they're still going to be in this world, and I'm not asking you to take them out of this world, I'm asking you to be with them and keep them from the evil one in this world. You see, the Bible makes a big difference between the earth and the world. It's two different things. Amen. The earth refers to the physical planet we live on with all of its natural beauty and splendor. Amen. That God has created for us. Amen. To enjoy. Psalm 95.3. For the Lord is great. A God, the great king above all gods, in his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. He created so many unique and wonderful things that are beautiful. And so many of us, amen, get to go on a vacation or go somewhere and enjoy these things like deserts and mountains and rolling hills and fruited plains, beaches and coastlines and islands and rivers, lakes and seas and oceans, amen, the majesty of Mount Everest, the wonderful mysteries at the depths of the deepest oceans, the countless cascading sand dunes of the Sahara Desert, the giant redwood and sequoia trees in Northern California that are some of the largest trees in the world, towering over 300 feet above the forest floor. Amen. The breathtaking beauty of the islands of the South Pacific. The amazing Amazon River that is 4,445 miles long. Amen. And when it rains, it can be as wide as 30 miles wide in some areas. Amen. The awe-inspiring northern lights, the aurora borealis that can be seen from many locations in the northern hemisphere. That's the earth. And God doesn't want us to be taken away from that. That's beautiful. But the world is a different thing. The world is the earthly state of human existence. Amen. The world is secular affairs. 
The world, spiritually speaking, amen, is the collective mindset and attitude and spirit of the people on earth. Amen. The world is about humanism. It's about evolution. It's about everybody doing what's right in their own eyes. It's about I'm okay, you're okay, and morality is defined by whatever we want it to be. Amen. The world is in spiritual darkness, and this darkness is fomented by the one whom the Bible refers to as the God of this world and the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan himself. Amen. Yet John told us in 1 John 2, 18, little children, it's the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now, as the, there are many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. Folks, we got our eyes open. It's the last time. It's the last time. Amen. And I don't know about you, but as the days pass and we see what's coming on this world, amen, and we see what's happening in this world, amen, don't be surprised and don't be shocked when you start feeling like you don't belong here anymore. Amen. That's actually a good thing because you're a child of the God and something inside you is calling you home. Amen. Praise God. When you start feeling that way, you're going to also start feeling the tug of another world, a heavenly world. Amen. An eternal world with Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen. First Peter 2, 9, when we came out of this world, we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity and in sin that our mothers conceive us. We were a, a man that's born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Amen. That's why we got to get our lives right with God. Amen. And we came out of miry clay. He set our feet on the rock to stay, that rock of Jesus. And the Bible said, First Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy but now you've obtained mercy Amen. Such were some of you, but now you're washed. Now you're sanctified. Now you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Woo! Amen. So he said, yes, you're still on planet Earth because Jesus didn't take us out of here yet. Amen. But you are departing from the world when you come to Jesus, the spirit of the world. First Corinthians 2, 12. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Romans 12, 2 said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So when we come out of the world, so to speak, and come to the, we come out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're still on the earth with everybody else. Amen. But we're walking, amen, to the beat of a different drum. Praise God. Amen. I'm walking in the light as he is in the light. Hallelujah. First John 5, 4, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. We're not of this world anymore. Amen. We haven't been once we made that decision. Praise God. Once we believed in the Lord, once we repented of our sins, once we went down in the watery grave of baptism and received his wonderful spirit, amen, we're not, a, a, not a, a like we used to be. Praise God. I'm not a, what I used to be. I'm not all what I need to be, but I'm on the right track now. Praise God. Amen. I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. I haven't yet arrived, but I'm on my way. Since Jesus found me and forgave me, I can't say I'm perfect, but I can say I'm saved. And I can say I'm going in the right place. Woo! Praise God. James said it pretty, pretty powerfully in chapter 4, verse 4. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? 
So whoever wants to be the friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. Now, this doesn't have nothing to do with loving people. It has nothing to do with reaching people and having and being friendly and, and trying to, you know, interact on, on your job or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. I'm talking about the world system and the spirit, amen, that is not of God. That's what we're talking about. And we're trying to shine bright for Jesus. Amen. amen. Matthew 5.14 tells us that we are to be the light of the world. Amen. We're the light of the world. Philippians 2.15 said that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Amen. Amen. A light can go a long way. You can just you can strike one little match in a pitch black room and you can make a big difference. Amen. That's why I'm glad my wife sang this little light of mine. Amen. Praise God because you make a difference. Your light makes a difference. Well, my little, you know, candle, my little one birthday candle can't do anything. No, no, don't hide it under a bushel. Put it out there. Even if it lights up a corner, that corner needs some light. Even if it lights up underneath behind something, that needs some light. Somebody needs to see your light. Amen. Put it on top. Hallelujah. Praise God. Malachi 3.18. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Between those who serve God and those who do not. That's the difference between darkness and light and the word, the spirit of the world and the spirit that's from God. Amen. When you're walking in the light, when you're walking in the spirit of God, amen, you automatically are going to stand out. Amen. You're not trying to. You're not trying to this or that or whatever. You're just trying to serve God and please God. But you are going to stand out. They're going to, some people might not like what you're standing for, but there's a lot of people that's going to, even though they might not say anything, they're going to respect your light. They're going to respect Respect your life. You just keep shining. Amen. You're not of this world. We got to show people a better way, a better life. Amen. So when we come to God, he said, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Now, when we read that, it's not talking about separating yourself on some, you know, remote mountaintop and saying, okay, well, uh, it says come out and be separate, so uh, I won't see you guys ever again. Sorry. <laughs> because I figure I'm going to be pretty good up there. Uh, no one's going to be, you know getting me sick with germs or no one's going to be tempting me to sin. No one's going to be, you know, daring me to do something or whatever. I'm going to just be up on this mountain. No, that, you know, and we know that some people and some groups have literally taken this and that's not what, it, how are we supposed to be light if we're away from everybody? Amen. You mean I got to go way up into some mountain to see some wise man, you know, that, uh, is up there to get some counsel? No, that wise man need to be down here and praying that God would show him who he needs to talk to. Amen. He, that wise man needs to be in the grocery store. He needs to be in the gas station at the car wash. He needs to be over at the school. Amen. Over at the job. Amen. Shining. Praise God. So that they'll see something in you and they'll ask, hey, why do you have hope? And you can say, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you about Jesus. So this separation, although it is physical in a sense, because since, since we are walking with God, amen, there are certain places in the darkness of the world that we don't go to anymore. Amen, we used to go to them, but we don't go to them anymore. So in that case, that's a physical separation. Amen. But it mostly is a separation in your heart and in your mind. Amen. 
praise God. When Lot's wife left, when the angels told Lot and his wife, get out of Sodom, God's about ready to fire, put down fire and brimstone. Lot, Lot came out and his wife came out. But though she was physically out of the city, her heart was still back there. And that's why she turned around and she disobeyed God's word. Amen. I'm telling you, we got to get out of the world and we got to get the world out of us. God help us. Amen. It's a separation in our heart, soul, spirit, and mind. Help us, God. Paul said we are in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. We're not of this world. Jesus said, I'm not of this world, and my children are not of this world. Praise God. Now, Jesus said, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, God loved the world. We're not talking about the earth. He said, I love the people. I love them so much. Even though there was in darkness and wickedness, amen, and they had uh, you know, fallen far from me, I came to set it straight. I came to give them a chance, amen. And so he said, he, he so loved the world that he gave. When he came to this earth in the form of man, the world did not receive him, and it did not love him. Many people did. We know his apostles did. He had many crowds following him. Praise God. But the, uh, the average, the world, uh, amen, in its spirit, uh, and certain people didn't want nothing to do with him. Amen. It was the spirit of the world that rejected him, persecuted him, humiliated him, beat him, and crucified him. Of course, amen, they couldn't have done it unless it was God's will. Amen. Because God allowed it to happen because if he wouldn't have been crucified, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Amen. I would be lost. Praise God. If he wouldn't have died and rose again. Amen. I wouldn't have forgiveness of sins. But it was the world that crucified him. So thank God there were many in the world. Many who believed. Many who received. And followed him. John 1.10 said he was in the world and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Talking about the Jewish people, well, some of them did. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name. Amen. Those that have faith, those that believed, they are the ones that reap the benefits of what he did. Praise God. Amen. And verse 13 said, which were born not of the blood, nor of the, not of blood or of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. Jesus prayed in our text passage. He said, keep them through your name in this world. Let them have my joy while they're in this world. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Because of it. And because they are not of this world. Even as I am not of this world. Don't take them out of the world. But keep them from the evil one. While they're in the world. God didn't just leave us stranded. And leave us. Amen. He sent his spirit back. He's got his power here. We got church. Amen. We got a people of God. We've got signs and wonders and miracles and divine healing. We got prayer and fasting. Praise and worship. Amen. We've got all these things that will help us. Praise God. Amen. So he, John, who knew all about love, warned us in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Remember, we're not talking about the earth. We're talking about the spirit of the world, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit that is opposite of God. Amen. Don't love those things. Amen. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Folks, as, as much as some people think, you know, we talked about Moses on Thursday night, how... 
He esteemed the riches of Christ more than the pleasures of sin for a season. The world is full of sinful enticements, uh, amen, that only satisfy for a season but have consequences that last for a long time, amen. So I'm telling you, that world and all of its allurements is going to pass away, but you and I and he and she that does the will of God shall abide forever with the Lord. So he said, Three, three things he talked about specifically about the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father. You see, the enemy, these are his three main tactics to try to attack anybody. We see it from the very beginning. The very, th only three chapters into the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, where Eve is tempted by the serpent, which we know is Satan. Amen. And we see that he used deception, partial truth, and lies to get Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. He said, you're not going to die if you eat of this tree. You know, trying to put a question, God said we're going to die. Amen. And he said, you know, God just told you that because he knew when you ate of this tree, you'd become gods like him and you'd know good and evil and you wouldn't need him anymore. You'd be your own, got your, you get your information from another source and you be you have some options. Amen. Praise God. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Look what he did. And look what Eve gave into Genesis 3, verse 6. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. You mean I can be a God like God? The pride of life. She took the fruit thereof, did eat, and give also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Amen. The pride of life, is a, he, the devil is expert in pride because it was his pride that caused his fall in the very beginning when he said, I will be like the Most High. And I'm saying, sorry, buddy, you're not. Nobody's going to be like the Most High. There's only one Most High. There's only one Almighty God. And no creature can ever overthrow the Creator. Amen. And he was cast down. Praise God. So see, though we're in the world and we're not of the world, amen. Yeah, we do have some persecution sometimes. and Yeah, we do go through things as Christians that that non-Christians don't go through. But you know what? It doesn't matter. I'd rather go through something as a Christian than just be with my head in the clouds and end up standing before God and saying, oh my goodness, I messed up. Amen. But I'll tell you, the way of a transgressor is hard. Amen. And the wicked and evil aren't going to end up, even though they look like they might have everything going for them and everything looks ho uh, you know, rosy posy on the outside. Let me tell you something. Amen. It might not be right then, but someday that's all going to crumble down. But he and she that does the will of God, you hang in there. It's going to be okay. Yeah, we're going to have tribulation in this world. Yeah, people aren't going to like some of the things we stand for because it makes them guilty. It makes them feel bad. Amen. Because they don't want to come out of the darkness maybe some of them don't want to change but you know what there's going to be plenty that do and it'll be worth us shining amen john 16 33 these things jesus said i have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world I'm not of this world. You're not of this world. I've overcome the world, and you stick with me, and you're going to overcome the world. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Praise God. So don't worry if you're not. I just don't feel at home. I kind of feel homesick, but this is my home. I was born here or whatever. Amen. I was born in Anaheim. Anaheim Memorial. I don't even know if the building's still there. It was an old brick building. It is? Okay, Mom, she says so, okay. <laughs> she was there. I was there, and then I was really there. Amen. Praise God. But you know what? And, I, and yeah, I like this. I was raised in this area. People come in here and go, how do you guys deal with this traffic and all this craziness and all this? I go, we're just used to it. 
you know? Amen. Praise God. You go back east and, you know, you see like one tractor and a couple guys over there. Everybody's just waving at you. Everybody's so friendly over here. As long as nobody, you know, like gives you any signs or anything, you feel like you've had a good day. Praise God. But you know what? I'm feeling a little homesick every day that goes by. I'm feeling a tug from another world because I've been putting treasure in heaven. Amen. I, I've been putting my affection uh, on high and not on the things of this earth. Uh, amen. So, because I, I, I'm, I'm investing in heaven because that's where I'm going. Praise God. That's going to be my ultimate retirement plan, my ultimate pension. Praise God. My ultimate golden parachute will be when the trumpet sounds. Hebrews 11:13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Amen. My God is God. You talk about whatever kind of retirement house you would like to see, you would like to live in. You've seen people in mansions and all this stuff. Amen. What well, we got waiting for us. Amen. All these things pale in comparison because Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. John 14, 1. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. So right now we're looking for him to come again. He's already done with the construction. He's already got the tool belt off. Amen. Now he's coming back as the mighty God in Christ. And he's going to set things straight. And he's going to come get his people. Praise God. And he's going to take us out of here. Amen. And we cannot even imagine, praise God, what this is all going to be. Praise God. But we know, amen, just by reading the Bible. And we know by hearing stories by other people that have walked with God. And we know by what we felt in the spirit. Amen. In services or even in prayer, worship times and anywhere in our car or home. We felt some things from another world. That's why 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You stand with me. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it all, folks. This is not the time to take your foot off the, the gas pedal. This is not the time to take a detour. This is not the time, amen, to praise God, to be faint-hearted. Help us, God, to be resolute. Help us to be committed, amen, to this cause of Christ. Praise God. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Help us, God. Oh, hallelujah. We're not of this world. Amen. We're not of this world. We're just temporary. We're strangers and pilgrims. That word stranger in the Bible is translated as the word foreigner in other places, other translations of the Bible. So we're we're foreigners and pilgrims. Amen. In a strange land, just like when somebody comes from another country over here or we go over there. Amen. And, and you you don't even know the lay of the land, the language, uh, the customs. Uh, amen. You might, you know, say, say something that's funny in the United States uh, and that's an insult in some other country. Amen. You don't even know. Praise God. But we're pilgrims. We're foreigners. We're ambassadors for Christ. Amen. I'm an ambassador of light. Praise God. Amen. And I've got to be the best ambassador I can be for the Lord to impact other people. Because we must be saved and they must be saved. Not all of them want to be saved. 
I read about on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God was poured out, the church officially began. began. Peter preached the first sermon on that inaugural day of the church. Amen. And then he paused and someone from the crowd shouted, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were pricked in their heart. They were convicted. After hearing that, what shall we do? He said, then Peter said unto them, Acts 2.38, Repent! Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins, for the blotting out and washing away of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words that he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward or perverse or dark generation. And they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen. So there was 3,000 souls that were added that day. But there was more than 3,000 that was at that gathering. So not everybody wanted to come out of darkness. At least right, right then. Praise God. So we're not going to win them all, but we're going to win some. Amen. Don't be discouraged because these three or four over there didn't want nothing to do with you, but you only had, you only had one that wanted to hear something. Amen. Thank God for the one. Amen. Remember, this year, everyone win one. We've still got a couple months to go. Everyone win one. Amen. Shine your light. Amen. And be open. Be ready to let Jesus shine in your hearts. Praise God. Praise God.